Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to talk about pressure gauge. Now if you're coming from Breville Barista Express background that means you get a pressure gauge with the machine and using this you will be able to know whether you did an under extraction or over extraction or you did the correct espresso flow. But if you come to a machine like this you don't have a pressure gauge. Now Barista Pro does not come with a pressure gauge and some of you may be wondering is it still possible to make a nice cup of espresso without a pressure gauge? The answer is simple yes. You will be able to make a nice cup of espresso. Now if you look at commercial grade machines most of them they don't come with a pressure gauge. Does that mean that you won't be able to make a good extraction? The answer is no, you will be able to make a good extraction. There are simple things to keep in mind. That's exactly what I'm going to show you today. How to identify whether you made a nice cup of espresso or not, just by the look. Uh, there are some parameters to keep in mind. So that's what I'm going to explain today. And you will be able to make a nice cup of espresso without a pressure gauge. So let's make a cup of espresso and I'll explain further about uh, whether it's a good cup of espresso or it's a bad cup of espresso. Let's begin. Here I'm going to take 17 grams of beans and we'll use this for the first experiment. So obviously you're gonna use the non-pressurized basket, in this case double cup size. And let's use the default Breville potter filter. Now I keep repeating this to everyone in the comments below that you should not be using the pressurized basket. This is the pressurized basket. It looks same but on the other side you have a single hole here and you should not be using this uh, for your normal use. But if you buy a pre-ground coffee from store or the beans from the store also you could use this it's still fine because this creates an artificial pressure it's not the real pressure because you're blocking the hole here and it that generates a lot of pressure inside which makes it looks like it's a good coffee with a lot of crema but that is kind of fake instead you should be using the non-pressurized basket using this you will be able to know whether you did an under extraction or over extraction or the correct extraction. So always, my advice is always use this basket. So the 17 grams goes in. Also note that my grind size is at six. Okay, so this is how it looks like and let's do a cup of extraction. Now this beans is roasted more than a month old and this will be a good example to show under extraction because you will be seeing that the flow of the espresso will be fast like water. So I got a weighing scale there and let's use the same. So here I'm all ready for the extraction but before that now, if you are an experienced espresso maker, you will be able to know that this extraction is going to be under extracted. Why? Because the beans are old. There could be many reasons. First reason is the beans are old or you do not put enough grinds. That means instead of 19, you put only 17. The other reason is you do not tamp properly. And the other reason is you do not grind finer. So there could be many reasons like this why it is under extracted. So let's begin and you will notice that the flow of the espresso will be quick. It will run like water and it will be pale brown color. 
and it's gonna be thin and there will be very less crema. Again, as you know, when I press the button for extraction, the first thing that happens is the pre-infusion and it will show in the display here. Now, if you feel what I said so far is so complicated, I will give you a very simple tip. That is, look at the timer here when you start the pre-infusion. As you know, when you press the extraction button, first thing that happens is the pre-infusion. And that happens usually five to 12 seconds. Now, the first thing to note for under extraction is the flow of the espresso will start less than seven seconds. And that is when you know that this is an under extracted shot. Now, let's look at the time here and the first drop when it happens, we'll watch the time. So let's begin, ready, steady, go. And watch the flow carefully. So the pre-infusion is happening now. Three seconds, four seconds. Now, the water already started flowing. And look at the flow. Now that was 14 second extraction and look at the extraction here. Now this is a clear example of under extraction. So the first thing you noted that the flow was very quick. It started less than seven seconds and the flow is fast like water. The crema is thin and pale or there's hardly any crema there. And the espresso is pale brown color. And this is gonna taste very sour. Look at this pale brown color, no crema or less crema. And it's a very watery shot. So just by looking at it and looking at the time here, you will know that this is an under extracted shot. Now let's do another shot, which is over extracted. Also, this doesn't look appealing though, but if you are serious about espresso, I would strongly suggest you to taste this. Now, many of you, they don't know the difference between sour espresso and normal espresso. So this is a good chance for you to taste how sour espresso tastes like or what sourness is. So do taste this and then keep that in mind. Now to show you an example of O extraction, the first thing is I'm going to reduce the grind size to a finer setting. So I made it at one. And let's grind some beans. So obviously these grinds are very fine. So let's use this. So here I already distributed and tamped it. Now the reason for over extraction is you could have more beans instead of 18, you use 19 or 19 and a half, or you might have tamped harder or your grinds are finer than normal. So this could be the reason why it could be over extracted. So let's begin. So I got everything ready. Now I want you to look at the flow of the espresso. It will slowly drip, maybe just drop by drop or nothing may come out. That could be one sign of over extraction. And then you'll see the crema will be dark and spotty. And then the espresso itself, it will look very dark brown thick color. And it's gonna taste very bitter and burned sometimes. Now again, if what I said is so complicated for you to look at, then I'll give you a simple step. That is look at the pre-infusion time. Now the guided time is between five and 12 seconds. So if you start seeing a drop, the first drop coming out after 13 seconds, that means 
it is over extracted. So that will be a very simple tip that you could follow. So let's begin the extraction and we will look closely at the time and we'll look at when the first drop will arrive. So let's begin, ready, steady, go. So pre-infusion is happening. Thirteen seconds, I don't even see a drop coming out. Nineteen seconds, nothing. So obviously the pre-infusion is over. Now I see a drop after 35 seconds. So that's a good example of extraction. It's more than 50 seconds. I'm gonna stop it by pressing. And you, you hear that a lot of water coming out somewhere. That is nothing but your overpressure valve pushing those water that came from the flow meter down to the drip tray through somewhere there. So that's what happened. So I got like one gram of espresso and it took more than 50 seconds. I had to stop it. Now this is a good example of over extraction. So to identify it was simple. The flow of the espresso will start after 13 seconds and the flow will drip but you'll see drops coming out or not at all and the crema will be dark and in my case um, I got a little bit of crema and it will be dark in color and the espresso itself will be very thick and this is gonna taste very bitter and burned Also, I would suggest go ahead and taste this. This is gonna be super bitter or it's gonna taste burnt. Now, if you want to know how bitter it tastes like, go ahead and taste this. Now, the consistency is almost like oil, a thick liquid. So now you know the difference between over extracted shot and under extracted shot and now you know how to identify. So do you need a pressure gauge for this? No you don't. Just by the look of it, just by looking at the time, uh, looking at the pre-infusion, uh, you will be able to identify whether this is over pressure or low pressure. It's so simple. Now this is how you identify whether you got the correct extraction whatever machine you use doesn't matter whether it's barista pro or commercial machine or even a cheap espresso machine you should be now knowing how to identify the correct extraction now how is the correct extraction it's somewhere between those two that we just saw now in the correct extraction the flow of the espresso will start between 8 to 12 seconds that's a guided number and the flow will look like warm honey or melted honey just pouring out through the spout. Ready, steady, go. So the pre-infusion is happening. And let's see. It's two seconds, three seconds. Let's see when we'll get the first drop. Okay, that's close to 10 seconds, which is right in the range and the correct range is between 7 and 12 seconds. Thirty-five second extraction and we got 42 grams out. And look at the crema.
and the crema will be golden brown and the espresso will have that deep brown color as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe. If you like this video, hit that like button. I would really appreciate it and I'll be posting more videos related to Breville, the Barista Pro, the Barista Express and other videos related to coffee. So stay tuned guys and see you guys next time. Bye for now.